When I decided to run away from home, I knew that my relationship with my family would be very different and that it would in turn affect everything. Coming from a big community that I interacted with on a regular basis, the change would be significant. But I think I severely underestimated how difficult it would feel interacting with others and the world as an estranged adult. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Onyinye and I'm a fibre artist and storyteller. I've mainly shared my art process on here, but on other platforms I talk about parts of my life and I think I want to do that on here as well. I don't think my life is the most interesting one out there, but I do think I have stories to tell and thoughts to share, so if you're interested you can stick around. Today I'm going to be working on my girlfriend's scarf that I'm making. If you have something that you want to work on whilst I talk today you're welcome to. This has two yellow stains on here that I'm really really scared are cat pee. It doesn't smell like cat pee I don't think but I am actually quite scared about that so I'm gonna have to wash this. That's what I'm working on today. Before we get started I just wanted to remind you guys that I'm fundraising for top surgery. My link is, you know. I would really like to get top surgery by the end of this year, so if you're able to donate, please donate and share as much as you can. I really appreciate it. So, as you can probably tell from the video title, I am estranged from my family. I ran away from home when I was 18 years old, moved in with my girlfriend and her family, and I now live in a flat with her. I did used to have a video on YouTube um, just explaining the story and the process, but I took it down a while back just because it was quite old and I don't know There was a few things I wanted to say different and I think I might make another one of it in the future But I don't really want to get into the whole details of the thing Everything today, so I'm 22 years old now and in the years between then and now there have been times where my family and I, specifically my parents, have been trying to work on our relationship and just work through things and there have been times when we've not been in contact and right now and for the foreseeable future we are not in contact. I think I've known for a long time that things would, sorry if you hear something in the background it's my cat, <laughs> he's just being a bit insane this morning. I've known for a long time that things would change between me and my family and my community. My family I Niger are Nigerian and Catholic and I was born in Nigeria but I grew up in Birmingham from the age of seven. Birmingham has a huge Nigerian Christian population and so like my family and I were really really involved in that community we go to church every week and the majority of the members of our church were Nigerian or African. We, there were always loads of events on. Two of my mom's sisters live quite close to us so I would always be seeing my cousins and I'd also always be seeing loads of kids my age in, like from the community. So as you can imagine, moving away and distancing myself from my family and that community because of, you know, them not being able to make me feel accepted was gonna be, it was, it was always gonna be a big thing. It was like having to cut off a really huge part of me. But then also I think I really do have the tendency to look through the past, look at the past through rose tinted glasses because when I was younger, it's not really like as if I was super happy being involved in that community. And whilst I really enjoyed you know, a lot of those events and it, it was a really great childhood to have being surrounded by people like me, people with similar experiences. I'd be lying if I said that I only started to feel other or, you know, different when I ran away. It's just not true. From the time that I realised that I was gay, which was I think around 10 or 11, I knew that the moment my family knew everything was going to change and everything was going to be very different. So all these moments that I had with people in my community, the time that I had with my cousins and like my, my family, it was kind of tainted in a way with the knowledge that it wasn't going to be like that forever and that things would change in a really bad way. So then I always had to remind myself that even though I really do feel this loss of community, it was kind of community that I never fully had to begin with, if that makes sense. Like, this community always came with a set of conditions that I never met to begin with. 
and I knew from a really young age that if I wanted to have a full life, a happy life, that I was going to have to stop holding on to this thing that I could never really have anyway. You know, when I talk about things like this, I am really, really aware of the fact that this is sort of like an inter-community discussion, but I am still going to have a lot of or I don't know, a certain amount of non-black people who are going to be watching this from the outside. So I think just keep that in mind, like keep that in mind that I'm talking about black um, and African community discussions. I'm talking about things that pertain to that. So if you're someone who's not a part of that community, do keep in mind that my experience is not the universal experience. There are multiple, there are many black and African um, queer people who don't have this experience of feeling othered by their community or who don't have this experience of feeling like as if they'll never be accepted in that community. My experience isn't the sole overarching experience of us all. And also keep in mind that when I'm talking about these things, things that are specific to the black or the African community, that I will be looking for the opinions of people who are from that community and who understand, so yeah. I appreciate if you're watching and you're not really from that community, but yeah, just keep that in mind. One thing that I wasn't really expecting so much was that having, not having a family in the sense that you're estranged from them is still worlds different from just not being close to your family. Like I knew it, but it, I still really felt the gap and the loneliness in the difference of those experiences only after I became estranged from my family. I think family for everyone isn't just parents who you can share everything with or siblings who know everything about you and who you can always confide in or aunties and uncles who are like more chill versions of your parents so you can tell them things that would otherwise get you in trouble. I know that's like a really idealised version of family and it's a family that Unfortunately, the majority of people don't have. The majority of people don't even have some of those dynamics, let alone all of them. So I know that people don't have family in that sense, or at least a lot of people don't. But even people who only talk to their parents when they go home for holidays, or don't really feel like they can confide in their parents, or aren't that close with their siblings, or have really strict parents so they hide a lot from them. A lot of people like that still have really different experiences. It's in a way where I just really feel like I can't connect to them or I feel like I don't I don't feel understood because the majority of those people still have their family to lean on. They still have they still know that if worse comes to worse, they can lean on their family for support whether it's financially or physically and I just don't have that. I genuinely don't have that. <laughs> And it isn't me invalidating other people's experiences with their family or other people's difficult relationships with their family. I'm under no illusions that just because you're in contact with your family means that the relationship isn't difficult or that it doesn't come with its own set of struggles. And I also know that there are people who are in much worse positions than me. There are people who have lost their family members and you know there's always going to be people with different experiences i'm not at all ignoring that or invalidating that and i know that there are overlaps with people who don't have a good relationship with their family but it is still different there's that security in knowing that you'll always have your family as a backup and i just i generally don't have that <laughs> even though my family would probably say otherwise, but I, I just really don't have that security. I don't have that backup. I don't have those people to fall back on. And it's funny because I have to toe the line of accepting the facts and accepting the situation for what it is, whilst also trying not to just wallow in a well of self-pity. And I have to tell myself that it's really upsetting and it is really difficult, the situation that I'm in, and it's not fair that I don't have this unit that the majority of people do and it does hurt and it makes me sad and it makes me angry I'm allowed to feel all of those things but I also have to remind myself that I have to keep moving and I have to just accept things the way that they are. Something that I know a lot of people will definitely resonate with whether they just have bad relationships with their family or they are estranged from their family is that feeling of wanting support or validation from them even when you know you won't get it 
It's so weird because my childhood being the way that it was, I really have grown up to be hyper independent to a fault. I really don't re like relying on people or sharing issues that I'm struggling with or asking people for support at all. Like for example with my GoFundMe, it took me so long to set it up even though that I knew I was going to need that help. It took me so long to actually set it up and even now I really really struggle with asking for it for people to donate to it on other socials because of that like really deep shame that I feel around needing the help and uh, around asking for the help. And for me there's an added layer to it in the sense that for in my community and Nigerians in general my parents would really emphasize relying only on family only they should know your problems only they will support you only they will be there for you and all other people will disappoint you and all other people won't help you and i've definitely seen evidence of that community support in the sense that for example if someone goes through a loss you know people in the church would fundraise and people would visit your house with loads of food and they'll just do what they can to remove that burden from you and help you through a difficult time but then on the flip side what happens if you don't fit into that community neatly what happens if you don't have that community doing that stuff for you because you kind of don't fit in with the conditions you don't abide by the rules and regulations needed to actually fit into that community where are you supposed to go to for that support so then i think with all of that it makes sense that even though i know i won't get the help the support the pride from my parents i still find myself wanting it and kind of half expecting it just because that's what i've been that's where i've been told is the only place I'll ever get it. So times when I've been in a really bad situation or I've been really worried about something, I've often found myself thinking, oh, I really wish I had my mum right now. I really wish I could, she could just tell me everything will be okay. But it's just crazy because the support that I'm thinking I'm gonna get from her, it just doesn't exist. Like, it wouldn't happen. I'm associating what I think I'm supposed to get with her, even though I would never actually get it. And so when I was in contact with my family, there have been things that I've, I've been really, really proud of myself for doing, like being on a billboard or um, doing collaborations with Channel 4 and the VNA. And I would find myself stupidly mentioning it to my parents. And then their reactions would just bring me right back to earth. And it would just be like reminding me, oh, did you forget you're a lesbian? That just means that everything that I do now is forever tainted and they can't ever feel pride for me now because I've done this one wrong thing that ruins everything. So it's just so crazy because why do I still find myself a small part of me wanting it even though I've been shown time and time again that I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get that pride from my parents. They're not going to feel that for me anymore. They're not going to give me that support. But I think I'm definitely getting much better at separating myself from that need and that want for it um, and instead looking towards myself and mo most importantly others to be honest because I do struggle with only wanting to rely on myself and I definitely do have people around me like my girlfriend and her family who always let me know that they're really proud of me and they're always there to support me. Like my girlfriend's family always say that even if we broke up they would always be there to support me and they would always want me around. I have people around me who are proud of seeing me achieve and are happy to watch me grow and I think I just have to get better at making myself believe it. Linking on to that though, I feel like from the moment I realised that I was gay and I realised that when my family knew everything would change. I've had this huge cloud of fear and just lack of security following me around, especially when it comes to finances. And it definitely comes from internalizing all the things that my family and my parents have told me about never being able to rely on anyone but family, never having anyone but family who will care about you. I just find it so hard to let go of the, the fact that I really do only have myself to rely on. Like I, I have to make all of these things okay and I have to, I'm the only one I can rely on. Like for example, I think about my job. The job that I work right now, I wouldn't say it's really the best job for me, um, but it's the only reason I'm able to live. Like what if I lose my job or I can't even afford to leave the job for something else? What if my cats get hurt? I, I don't, I feel like I just don't have that cushion, that 
the majority of people do with their family who will kind of back them up if they're ever going through hard times. Like I think I need to finish my driving lessons so I can pass my tests. Need to get the money for that. I need to save up for a car. I need top surgery. <laughs> I really need therapy. I want to build my savings. So I feel so aware of all of these things and I feel like I've been aware of them since I was 10 years old and just aware of the fact that it's up to me and only me to make these things happen. I can't get help from anyone else. I don't have family to rely on for any of that or to rely on if any emergencies come up. So it really is all up to me. So I have honestly become such a workaholic because I just think of all these things that I have to plan for and all these things that I have to make okay. And it's a lot for one person to have been dealing with from a young age, to be honest. At the same time, I know I really have to try hard to make sure that I'm not devaluing the people around me. So for example, my girlfriend's parents again, even if I find it hard to believe that they care enough about me to help me if times get tough, I have to take them at their word and make myself believe it. I can't work myself out of this hyper-independent mindset. I can't work myself into everything being okay. I just have to trust that everything that I do with my art and the videos that I make and the things that I share is gonna be enough and that everything is gonna work out in the end. And I try to remind myself of things like my top surgery. I have over 2,000 of my goal reached just on the goodwill of other people. And that's people I'm friends with and people I know, but the majority of it is people I've never seen, people I have never interacted with, just people who see that I need help and want to help. So I really can't underestimate or undervalue that. And I'm really, really grateful. I know this video seems quite negative and it's because it's hard. I can't sugarcoat loneliness or sugarcoat the feelings of alienations or my experiences. It just is what it is. But regardless of all of that, I still feel like I made the best choice possible. I made the choice that allowed me endless possibilities and gave me the opportunity to live as myself. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Um, I'd really love to hear from you in the comments, so let me know any of your thoughts. And if you'd like to see more of my art, my thoughts, and just what I get up to, feel free to stick around. See you next time. Bye.